Well, good morning. Welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television. Uh, the stage is all set for the grand swearing-in ceremony of Prime Minister Narendra Modi this evening. He will take oath as the Prime Minister for the second time today in the biggest ever ceremony at the forecourt of Rashtrapati Bhavan. 8,000 guests, including world leaders, governors and chief ministers of the states, uh, party and opposition leaders, diplomats and celebrities will attend the ceremony at 7 p.m. this evening. Rajya Sabha TV will bring you uh, the swearing-in ceremony live in the evening and all the updates and analysis as well. But uh, first, uh, let's take a quick look at the headlines at the SAR. Narendra Modi to take oath as Prime Minister this evening. The leaders across the world, a party, opposition, a diplomats, a celebrities among 8,000 guests to attend the event. Family members of BJP activists killed in political violence in West Bengal also invited. Prime Minister Modi pays a tribute to Mahatma Gandhi at Raj Ghat. Former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee at Sadev Atal Smr Smriti Sthal remembers martyrs at the National War Memorial. Bimstech leaders arrive in New Delhi for the grand swearing-in ceremony. President of Kyrgyz Republic and Mauritian Prime Minister to also attend the historic event. Paisa Congress Chief Jagan Mohan ready to be sworn in as Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh today. Governor ESL Narsimhan to administer the oath at a ceremony in Vijaywala. And cricket's biggest extravaganza ICC World Cup kicks off with the opening party at iconic London Mall. Hosts England to take on South Africa at the Oval in the inaugural match. Men in blue to face South Africa on 5th of June in their first game in the tournament. Of course, the biggest story is the swearing-in of uh, Prime Minister Modi and his Council of Ministers. And ahead of the swearing-in ceremony this evening, Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrived at Rajghat this morning to pay tribute to Mahatma Gandhi. And after Rajghat, uh, Prime Minister Modi visited the memorial of former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Bajpayee, Sadev Atal Smriti Sthal, to pay floral tributes to the leader. Top BJP leaders, including party chief Amit Shah, were present at the memorial. Modi also visited the National War Memorial to pay homage to the martyred Javans.
So Narendra Modi will take oath as Prime Minister for a second term on Thursday in the biggest ever event at the forecourt of Rashtrapati Bhavan today. BIMSTEC leaders started arriving in the national capital since last night to attend the event. Congress President Rahul Gandhi, UP Chairperson Sonia Gandhi, Telangana Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao, Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar and Delhi Chief Minister Arvind K. Jival will be present among others. The swearing-in ceremonies are scheduled to start at 7pm in the evening. Here are all the details. The stage is set. The guests have started arriving in the national capital for Narendra Modi's second swearing-in ceremony as Prime Minister. Bangladesh President Mohammad Abdul Hamid was the first to arrive on Wednesday evening. Mauritius Prime Minister Pravin Kumar Jugnauth and Bhutan Prime Minister Lote Shering arrived this morning. This time, India has invited the heads of state of BIMSTEC countries. This is in contrast to 2014 when India had invited the heads of SARC nations. Grisada Bunrak, Special Envoy of Thailand, Yu Win Mint, President of Myanmar, Maitri Palasi Risena, President of Sri Lanka, and KP Sharma Oli, Prime Minister of Nepal, and Suron Bejin Bekov, President of Kyrgyzstan, who is also the chair of SCO, will also arrive today for the occasion. Government decided to extend the invitation to BIMSTEC countries and to two other countries, Mauritius and Kyrgyzstan. Uh, Mauritius, because it's a very close, very friendly country, and Kyrgyzstan, in its capacity as the current chair, of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Our foreign minister was there recently for a minister's meeting. And then the prime minister is scheduled to go there for the summit meeting of the SCO. So it's an important country and India has decided to invite that country as well. The visiting dignitaries will be given special reception by President Ramnath Kovin. Prime Minister Modi will also have separate bilateral meetings with all the dignitaries on 30th and 31st of May. Uh, this is a re-election, it's not a fresh uh, uh, prime minister or a fresh government. So uh, the, the experience of the last five years naturally weighs upon the policies that will be followed now. As a special gesture, Prime Minister Modi also invited family members of BJP workers killed in political violence in West Bengal. Invitations have also been extended to various chief ministers, among whom West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee and Kerala Chief Minister Pinarai Vijayan have said they will not be able to attend. This is Akhilesh Suman's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And our reporters are joining us uh, from the field to get us more on that story. We have with us Mohamed Fatih Tipu joining us uh, from Raj Ghat. Also, Akhilesh Suman is uh, joining us. Uh, Ravindra Singh Shoran is also joining us. Uh, let's uh, come uh, first uh, to you, Mohamed Fatih Tipu. Uh, of course, uh, before uh, Prime Minister-elect uh, Narendra Modi takes oath for the second time uh, this evening, uh, of course, he began his day by paying his respects to Mahatma Gandhi, the late Atal Bihari Vajpayee, and also soldiers killed in the line of duty and the Mahatma's memorial that is Rajghat was uh, the first stop on Modi's itinerary today. निश्चित रूप से ऐश्वर्या आज देश के लोकतांत्रिक यात्रा में आज का दिन बहुत ही अहम है जिस तरीके से प्रधानमंत्री मोदी को प्रचंड जनादेश दिया देश की जनता ने देश की जनता की जनादेश का सम्मान और मर्यादा और शुचिता को बरकरार रखते हुए प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी ने अपनी यात्रा दिनचर्या की शुरुआत प्र... महात्मा गांधी की समाधि पर जाकर किया वहाँ पर वो पहुँचे ठीक सात बजे श्रद्धांजलि अर्पित की और बापू को याद किया पहले भी अपने कार्यकाल में अगर आप याद करेंगे पिछले पाँच साल का तो कई मौकों पे गांधी की विचारधारा को प्रासंगिक करार दिया प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी ने 2014 में वोट लेने के बाद में जब वोट लिया उसके पहले भी वो राष्ट्रपिता के की समाधि पर गए और आप याद करेंगे कि जिस तरह से अट्ठाईस साल के बाद में कोई भारत का प्राइम मिनिस्टर जब ऑस्ट्रेलिया गए गया तो वहाँ पर जाकर के उन्होंने बापू की समाधि का अनावरण किया उनकी प्रतिमा का अनावरण किया वहाँ पे भी उन्होंने गांधी की, की विचारधारा को प्रासंगिक करार दिया तो देखिए कहीं ना कहीं जो सरकार की तमाम वेलफेयर स्कीम्स रही हैं जो जो योजनाएं रही हैं उसमें भी गांधी की विचारधारा कहीं ना कहीं परिलक्षित होती रही चाहे वो स्वच्छता कार्यक्रम आप देख लीजिए या अंत्योदय कार्यक्रम देख लीजिए तमाम योजनाओं में गांधी की विचारधारा का रिफ्लेक्शन मिलता रहा ऐश्वर्या इसी वजह से आज भी जब चूंकि ऐतिहासिक दिन है देश की जनता के लिए भी प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी के लिए भी और तमाम पड़ोसी मुल्कों के लिए भी दुनिया के लिए भी कि 
दुनिया का ये बड़ा लोकतांत्रिक देश दरअसल आप गौर करेंगे कि जिस तरीके से पिछले पचास वर्षों में दूसरी बार पूर्ण बहुमत की सरकार बनी है और प्राइम मिनिस्टर इसे मोदी प्रधानमंत्री हैं जो पहली बार पूर्ण बहुमत की सरकार को लीड करने जा रहे हैं और हर तरह से जिस तरह से इन्होंने सबका साथ सबका विकास और सबके विश्वास की बात की निश्चित तौर पर देश की जनता को बड़ी उम्मीदें हैं और प्रधानमंत्री मोदी ने अपने जनादेश के बाद में पहले ही ये 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 साबित कर दिया ये उन्होंने संदेश दे दिया कि हम सबका साथ सबका विकास सबका साथ लेकर के चलेंगे और सबका विकास करेंगे तो फिलहाल आज का दिन काफ़ी ऐतिहासिक है महत्वपूर्ण है और शाम को सात बजे राष्ट्रपति भवन प्रांगण में ओथ सेरेमनी होगी वहाँ पर तमाम जो ऐतिहासिक पल है उसके गवाह तमाम पड़ोसी मुल्क के राष्ट्र अध्यक्ष बनेंगे फिलहाल आज का दिन काफी महत्वपूर्ण माना जा रहा है ऐश्वर्या वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वेरी हिस्टोरिक डे रविंद्र सिंह शुरान इज नाउ ज्वाइनिंग अस फ्रॉम अटल समाधि स्थल Ravindra of course Prime Minister Modi also paid his respects at the memorial of late Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee at uh, the Sadaiv Atal Das Samadhi Sthal it's a lotus shaped monument dedicated to Mr Vajpayee that was inaugurated uh, last December so a lot of symbolism in that visit as well Yeah good morning Ashra that's right uh, the prime minister the prime minister designate Narendra Modi's visit to sadaiv atal it symbolizes that how uh, this is what it symbolizes what the prime minister designate narendra modi has been saying for long time at different in his speeches that whatever the record victory they have registered in this election in the last 2014 election this is not because of him but this is the efforts of own uncountable Uh, workers who have been working here on the field and they have been working for the last many decades they have sacrificed their life and atul bihari vajpayee is one of the workers of the party who rose up to the ladder and was one of the tallest leader of the separate party has ever produced and this is a tribute and obsequies to that leader and to all those worker who have sacrificed their life for the sake of the nation and for the development of this uh, ideology which atul bihari vajpayee which narendra modi have been following for long today when he reached here after paying his respect to bapu then atul uh, this is the uh, remember this is last time when prime minister narendra modi uh, he took the oath uh, he uh, visited to meet uh, atul bihari vajpayee who was not in a healthy uh, shape at that time but uh, he was alive and he met Uh, he went to meet atal bihari vajpayee the late prime minister at that time and yes. today when atal bihari vajpayee is not among us then he reached here to pay uh, his respect to the late prime minister and uh, atal uh, prime minister narendra modi he has been he has been saying that he is following the line which has shown by atal bihari vajpayee yes. the tall leader of the party Absolutely. and uh, he was one of the most successful prime minister of this country so far and all the policies which includes the foreign policy and the policies on the of different uh, domestic level which yes. includes the welfare of the downtrodden people and also for the farmers the, the narendra modi government will try and follow all this policy and this visit to his memorial is a uh, tribute to the old Indeed, to the tallest to leader late, uh, and also atal bihari vajpayee and prime minister modi also doesn't uh, miss any chance uh, uh, to show his love and respect for the armed forces as well and navikram singh is now joining us from national war memorial navikram uh, we saw how prime minister narendra modi today also visited the national war memorial that also of course uh, has a special significance this is a monument which is dedicated to the soldiers martyred in the soul, uh, in the service of our country over the decades बिल्कुल ऐश्वर्या अब आप आ, अगर शुरुआत से देखेंगे कि जिस तरीके से राजघाट गए और फिर उसके बाद अटल जी की समाधि पर गए फिर उसके बाद युद्ध स्मारक पर गए एक खास संदेश देती है शपथ ग्रहण जो दूसरी पारी है उससे पहले उनका यहां श्रद्धांजलि देना क्योंकि आ, अटल जी को याद करते हुए एक तरह से उनकी पार्टी कि, आ, कि, आ, जो उनकी पार्टी के लिए आ, जो उन्होंने योगदान दिया और साथ ही आजाद भारत में एक विपक्ष खड़ा करने के आ, में साथ ही उस विपक्ष को सत्ता तक पहुंचाने में आ, अटल जी का बहुत बड़ा योगदान है और आजाद भारत से पहले महात्मा गांधी जिन्होंने आजादी के लिए एक लंबी जद्दोजहद की और बड़ा योगदान दिया उनके लिए और उनका जो संदेश है अहिंसा 
उन्होंने एक तरह से दिखाया कि महात्मा गांधी का जो संदेश अहिंसा है उस पर भी भारत भरोसा करता है साथ ही आत्मरक्षा जिस तरीके से पोखरण जैसे मसले पर पोखरण जो हमारे परमाणु ताकत से सक्षम बनाया भारत को वो अटल जी थे और उसके बाद नेशनल वॉर मेमोरियल में उन्होंने एक तरह से संदेश देने की कोशिश की भारत उनको भी नमन करता है जिन्होंने देश के लिए सर्वोच्च बलिदान दिया तो एक तरह से एक सिंबल है एक तरह से ये उनका जो तीनों जगह श्रद्धांजलि देना है वो एक बहुत बड़ा संदेश दे, देता है कि दूसरी पारी में भी उनके लिए वो प्राथमिकताएं बरकरार रहेंगी right. जो उनके लिए जो 2014 से लगातार अभी तक उन, उन्होंने दी हैं Absolutely, and Akhilesh yes, Suman is also joining us at this moment. Akhilesh, uh, we saw how uh, uh, the Prime Minister started his day early, visiting uh, the National War Memorial, uh, the Samadhi of uh, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, as well as uh, visiting Raj Ghat. But uh, of course, uh, all the action will take place uh, this evening at the oath-taking ceremony, and BIMSTEC leaders are also arriving, as well as uh, the Kyrgyz uh, President and uh, the Mauritian Prime Minister are also here. So uh, there is a lot of uh, symbolism in uh, the leaders who are going to be present as, uh, at this oath taking ceremony as well right uh, you know that if you remember 2014 oath taking ceremony uh, there was a lot of buzz uh, about who will be coming and when the you know invitation was extended to sark uh, heads of governments it was really a good surprise to everyone that yes you uh, understand that your neighbors are very important uh, but sark uh, you know could not be successful and it virtually became dysfunctional you know uh, because of uh, pakistan's adherence to terrorism but remember just uh, maldiv election had taken place and prime minister narendra modi was invited in the oath taking ceremony of maldivian president and prime minister narendra modi went there so you know certain uh, you know tradition that was established by prime minister modi in 2014 is being you know followed by other you know neighboring nations and maldive followed the same so this time we were also you know very curious that who is going to be invited and then uh, invitation went to bimstek leaders and more than bimstek leaders it went to you know president of sco so sco has emerged as a very robust organization in last uh, few years because india and pakistan both joined sco after being observer uh, in, uh, for many years so now sco is another you know organization that is working in central asia but influ its influence will be also towards middle east and also to some south asian countries so yes. sco president invitation is one of the unique things other than uh, you know uh, bimstek leaders and uh, you know that uh, mauritius has been our evergreen friend yes. uh, you know uh, you can say that it is extension of india and familyhood so uh, mauritius calling is also a big symbolism that we want to reach to all those countries all those people who are known as our brethren and sisters yes. and you know bimstek is also like that it is extension of indian culture go it beat thailand beat you know Ma myanmar sri lanka all are uh, you know that extension of indian yes. uh, culture and bangladesh is our best neighbor in that way you can say that we have robust uh, cooperation relationship with bangladesh so it's a really a big symbolism that if you cooperate with us if you don't adhere with uh, you know terrorism and if you want to uh, success uh, and uh, development journey yes. with india we are all there with you Absolutely. and i think that so this there is a huge outreach that we can see day, and there's a lot uh, of symbolism yeah. to that oath taking ceremony that will take right. place uh, this evening uh, at the fort court of the rashtrapati bhavan thank you so much akilesh uh, as well as a uh, thank you so much uh, Ravindra Singh uh, from joining for joining us from Atal Samadhi Sthal Mohammad Fati Tupu for joining us from Rajghat and uh, also Navikram Singh for joining us from National War Memorial thank you all of you for all those updates there on that big story and as after Arun Jaitley wrote a letter to the prime minister suggesting uh, to opt out of his new government prime minister Narendra Modi arrived at the residence of Jaitley and in a letter to the prime minister Arun Jaitley had said that he does not want to be a minister in the new BJP government due to health reason in a four paragraph letter to the prime minister arun jaitley said that uh, he had uh, orally informed modi about his desire to not be a part of the new government uh, so that it enabled him to concentrate on his uh, health and his treatment and in the letter he formally requested to be allowed a reasonable time for himself 
his treatment and his health. Remember, last year, Arun Jaitley was forced to take a three-month break as well to undergo a kidney transplant. And earlier this year, he also had to travel to the United States for treatment, depriving him of the opportunity to present the sixth and the final budget of the Modi government's first term. And when the BJP managed to power... Uh, in 2014, he was uh, made the Minister for Finance and Corporate Affairs and was also then given additional charge of uh, the Ministries of Defence and Information and Broadcasting for short periods. And as Finance Minister, he steered through Parliament uh, the major economic legislation, namely the GST, that uh, had been languishing for decades. And big story coming in from Andhra Pradesh. Well, Vaisa Congress Chief uh, Jagan Mohan Reddy will be sworn in as uh, the Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister today. He will be the Chief Minister of uh, Andhra Pradesh uh, post its bifurcation. Governor ESL Narsimhan will administer the oath of office and secrecy in a grand public function at uh, the IGMC Stadium in Vijaywara at around 12.30 in the afternoon. Telangana Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao, Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar and uh, Janasena Party Chief uh, Pavan Kalyan are among the host of dignitaries who are likely to attend the swearing-in ceremony. Our colleague uh, Kriti Mishra is now joining us uh, live uh, for more on that story. Kriti, what more details do we have about the swearing-in ceremony of uh, Jagan Mohan Reddy? Because we understand uh, that a lot of leaders have been invited. Uh, what are your sources uh, telling you who all are going to attend? And also tell us about the preparations that are on because we understand that this uh, event is going to be live-streamed as well. Well, that's right, Ashwara. So, Andhra Pradesh is all set to witness the meteoric rise of YSR CP Chief uh, Jagan Mohan Reddy. And all preparations are in place and stage is all set for his swearing-in ceremony at 12.23 p.m. today with the iconic uh, Indira Gandhi Municipal Stadium in Vijaywara with a seating arrangement of more than 25,000 people. There's massive security cover because several high-profile dignitaries are expected to attend the event. What you're hearing right now is that DMK Chief uh, MK Stalin would uh, fly from Chennai to attend this ceremony as well as uh, TRS chief and also Telangana chief minister KCR would be here to attend the ceremony. Also the invite was extended to, to his predecessor Chandra Babu Naidu but what we are hearing right now is that he would not be attending this ceremony. Thereafter Jagan Mohan Reddy and also Telangana chief minister KCR will fly to Delhi to attend the swearing in ceremony of prime minister and thereafter Jagan Mohan Reddy would come back and take over the reins, uh, the administrative reins of Andhra Pradesh. Remember, his party has registered astounding majority in uh, Andhra Pradesh, uh, winning 151 out of 175 assembly seats and 22 out of 25 parliamentary seats. Yes. Well, there are several challenges ahead because uh, remember this clamor for special category status in Andhra Pradesh. Polavaran project has to be concluded and also. Uh, the government, the Andhra Pradesh government has to tread on the path of fiscal consolidation because remember, when Andhra Pradesh was bifurcated from Telangana, Andhra Pradesh started with fiscal deficit. So there are several challenges uh, on this throne for Jagan Mohan Reddy and we have to see how he walks the talk. Over to you, Ashwarya. Absolutely. So Andhra Pradesh all set for the swearing-in ceremony of the YSR chief, Jagan Mohan Reddy. Uh, at this moment, the sources say that uh, Reddy will alone take uh, oath today and his council of ministers uh, are likely to be constituted on 7th of June. We have to wait and watch. Uh, thank you so much, Kriti, uh, for all those updates from Andhra Pradesh there. And uh, the ICC Cricket World Cup 2019 kicked off on Wednesday evening with a grand opening party at the iconic London Mall with the picturesque Buckingham Palace in the backdrop. Now, captains of all the 10 participating teams uh, took part in the star-studded ceremony in London. Queen Elizabeth of Britain also met the captains of all the teams at the Buckingham Palace. In the inaugural match today at the Oval, England will take on South Africa. The match will begin at 3 p.m. Indian time. Two times world champions India will play their first match on 5th of June against South, of South Africa at the Hampshire Bowl in Southampton. The World Cup uh, will span 48 matches in all, of which uh, 45 will uh, make up the group stage and each team will play nine group stage matches and uh, the top four teams will progress to the semi-finals, which is uh, similar to how the 1992 World Cup was played. And with that, we wrap up this edition of Breakfast News. Thanks for watching. Have a lovely day ahead.